<clears throat> All right. Um, hopefully, you had a chance to look at the uh, at the doc. Um, so this isn't uh, just coming in cold, but um, if you didn't, <clears throat> the five second version is uh, this approach controls policy uh, based on labels on namespaces. Um, it follows pod security standards in terms of buckets, like three buckets, privilege, which allows anything, baseline, which allows baseline stuff, and restricted, which is a really locked down, like you must constrain permissions and uh, like put a lot of controls in place. Um, and then it handles uh, the, <clears throat> it handles the, um, uh, thought that we would have to change what the restricted policy and maybe the baseline policy look like over time by adding support for optionally pinning to a particular version of those policies. So I <laughs> actually one second ago, like reverted to an older version of my branch because the latest version wasn't working. So this is going to be super exciting. Um, to kick this off, uh, the labels that were proposed look something like this. Um, I just made a bunch of namespaces so you can kind of see what expressing this policy would look like on different namespaces. So here's a namespace that doesn't indicate what policy level it wants. And so uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I don't have the pod security Kubernetes IO label at, on that namespace. Here's one that explicitly wants to be privileged. So it um, is setting its enforce level to the privileged policy. Here's one that explicitly wants to be baseline. So it's setting its enforce level to the baseline policy. Um, so far, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, only uh, the privileged namespace will allow anything. The baseline namespace will only allow pods that fit inside the baseline policy. Um, but as we've talked about in this meeting, we also want the ability to sort of dry run policy or see what the effect of a policy would be uh, without breaking the world. Uh, that's important to be able to safely transition onto this mechanism or just, I mean, quality of life in general, like safely apply policy changes over time. And so uh, this also allows, rather than enforcing a given policy level, it allows warning uh, on a given level. So this namespace, is saying, I want to warn about pods that don't fit inside the baseline policy. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, this, the restricted namespace uh, is only allowing pods that fit in the restricted level. And then this is what it could look like to uh, pin to a particular version of the restricted policy. So um, the way you say you want to, oops, the way you say you want to uh, use a restricted policy is the same, but you also can say, I want to use a particular version. So I had to go pretty far back to find a change in Kubernetes that would have trickled into the pod security standards. But uh, in one seven, the allow privilege escalation field did not exist in pods. And so um, obviously at, in the one seven timeframe, we wouldn't have had an opinion about whether you have to set that field or not. In the 1.8 release, we added that field. And restricted pods should prevent privilege escalation. They should, prevent, they should set that explicitly to false. Um, and so that would be a good example of like prior to 1.8, we didn't have an opinion about this. But in 1.8 and onward, uh, we did. So I've got these namespaces set up. I don't actually have any pods created. So I'm going to uh, walk through what it looks like. Here we go. Uh, to create different, or to try to create different pods of different privilege levels in all of these namespaces. So first of all, I've got a privileged pod, which is privileged. Um, I've got a baseline pod, which is just a sort of standard pod. Like it's not opting in to host visible stuff, but it's also not like setting super strict controls, uh, like you know, allow privilege escalation. And then finally, I've got a restricted pod, which um, is opting into tighter controls, like a lot of privilege escalation false. So I'm going to 
this is fancy stuff to say, try to create the privileged pod in every one of those namespaces. And so I'm going to step through and see what happens. So can I do it in my namespace that didn't express a policy? <laughs> oh my, oh demo gods, you have failed me. Let me see if this works now. Oh, oops. Yay, okay, back on track. All right, so I can create a privileged pod in the namespace that didn't have a policy level. I can create one in one that was explicitly privileged. When I try to create it in the baseline namespace, I am forbidden, and it tells me this pod is not allowed, and it tells me why, because it has privileged containers. Um, so now if I try to create it in the namespace that was only warning about the baseline policy, um, I'm actually allowed to create it, but I get a user facing warning giving me the same information. Um, and so you can imagine an administrator who was planning to tighten down policy could put warn a warning level on their namespaces and then send an email to their org saying, uh, like in a month, we're going to be going to the baseline policy. So you know, run your workloads, run your CI tests, like do whatever you're going to do, file a ticket here if, or make changes if you don't fit inside. So this lets you have a user facing um, a user facing warning without actually disrupting uh, operations. Uh, and then similarly, it's rejected for the restricted namespace, it's rejected for the restricted as of 1.7 namespace, allowed with a warning uh, in the um, uh, restricted warning namespace. Um, and so something similar <coughs> for the baseline pod. Uh, it's going to be allowed in more namespaces. It's allowed in my baseline namespaces. It's forbidden in my restricted namespaces. Uh, and the reason it's forbidden in the restricted namespace, you can see it's complaining that it didn't opt into that allow privilege escalation false uh, field. Um, when I try to create it against the restricted legacy namespace, that message is not there. So the restricted legacy, the restricted policy as of 1.7 didn't know about this field. So even though my pod didn't opt into it, it, uh, it wasn't complaining about that. All right, so uh, <clears throat> as you can see, I wasn't able to create baseline or privileged pods inside my restricted namespace, only in the one that was limited to warning about it. Um, and actually, the, one of the cool things I wanted to do uh, looks like something that just merged into the master branch may have broken. So I need to, uh, I need to investigate that after the demo. But <clears throat> I can show you some of the other things that this lets you do. So because the policy, the way you specify like what policy applies to a namespace is based on labels, um, you can use label selectors to um, easily find like namespaces that have different policy associated with it. So if I wanted to find uh, a namespace that was explicitly using a version of a policy other than the latest version, I can do that with a label selector. I can say find uh, namespaces that are enforcing that have specified a version where that version is not latest. And so right away, I can see uh, like this you know, restricted legacy namespace pops out makes it really easy to uh, find namespaces that are pinned to older versions uh, and then gradually like, focus on migrating them or figuring out what's going on with their workloads. Uh, so you have good visibility to what is being enforced uh, and good visibility to be able to query uh, and identify namespaces that aren't compatible with the latest version. Um, <clears throat> so the other interesting thing that we can do with this besides just querying and having sort of dry run that's user facing with the warnings and dry run that's uh, admin facing with audit, um, we can dry run changing uh, policy. So because policy levels are specified with labels on namespaces, the way we would change those is by relabeling the namespace. <clears throat> and so if I wanted to, um, 
change all of my namespaces to be the baseline policy instead of the privilege policy uh, or, or instead of what, whatever they currently were, I could, I could just label them all, you know, uh, to baseline and then see what broke. That would be bad. Um, I could um, warn, you know, I could put, I could say, start warning at the baseline level and then hopefully some human user interacts with this namespace uh, before I decide to like actually make this effective and notices and does something about it. Um, I could audit at the baseline you know, level and then watch my audit logs for a while and hope that something, some automated process or some user did something that would make you know, the fact that there was stuff in this namespace that would be disallowed by the baseline policy, it would make that show of my audit logs. Uh, but what would be really great is if I could um, check if there was currently stuff in this namespace that was going to be disallowed by this new version. And so <clears throat> even though the way I would do this is by labeling the namespace, we actually can dry run API requests. And so I can dry run, I can send this label request to the server and say, like, hey, dry run labeling these namespaces. Um, but don't actually commit it. Like, don't don't actually change the namespace. Uh, and because the admission plugin that's responsible for enforcing this policy on pods is also looking at changes to namespaces, it can detect when we are changing enforcement level on a namespace, and it can do its own check of pods that already exist in the namespace and give us warnings if any of those would be disallowed by the new policy level. So. If I were to relabel all my namespaces to start enforcing at the baseline level, these are current pods that would be disallowed by that new policy. So in my no policy namespace, I had a privileged pod. Uh, and if I tightened enforcement on that namespace to the baseline policy, that existing pod would be disallowed. Uh, so this, this, would be dis this could be disruptive for that namespace. Uh, similarly, you know, I've got other uh, privilege pods and other namespaces. So th this lets me, uh, this is one way to sort of see, are there currently things that would have problems if this new policy was uh, enforced? Anyway, that is in a few minutes, kind of the, how you select policy levels for namespaces, the things you can do, you can enforce, you can audit, you can warn. Um, we handle the versioning issue by letting people pin to a particular version, like the policy as it existed in a particular version. That makes it easy to decouple cluster upgrades from you know, fixing all your workloads. Like if you're about to upgrade from 117 to 118, uh, and you're like, you know what, I don't, I don't know if my, I haven't had a chance to go read the 118 release notes. Like they were 40 pages long, and I just didn't have time. You can, you can pin your namespaces using the latest policy to v117 and do your upgrade and then come back later and like you know dry run or audit at the v118 level um, and if it's clean then you can like unpin put it back to latest but unless you decouple that or do it namespace by namespace that's all i got <clears throat>